Welcome to your universe. Uh, hey, everybody. This is uh, Interverse Podcast. My name is Chance, and we are talking to Chris Abert, who has got, I'm sure, a lot of stuff to talk about and catch up with uh, us on because he hasn't been on the show for so long. But specifically, Chris has been very involved with this upcoming event, Darkening of the Sun Festival. And uh, yeah, Chris, how's it going, man? It's going great, man. It's good to be on your show again, dude. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, stuff has been moving quickly since the last time you were on here. It's been like, man, it's been a long time ago, months ago, probably. Yeah. It was yeah. like uh, episode 22 or something, season two, way back there. Yeah, it's been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Uh, so what have you been doing, man? Explain your hustle because uh, I have a glimpse into your world because we do keep in touch but like you know tell the people what all has been going on how has the evolution uh been directing itself or how have you been directing it maybe okay well yeah well well right now recently i mean you know, me and you've been talking about the the darkening of the sun uh, i've been involved in the da- darkening the sun festival during the eclipse august 18th through 21st it's in st Clair, missouri um but yeah i've been i've been involved with that uh pretty much doing the darkening of the sun radio um, and <clears throat> interviewing different guests. I've had, uh, I've had a few different musicians on like the, the headliners for the event. Um, and it's been really cool, like getting involved with that and getting to, to hang out with Eric more. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been super interesting. And so Eric is one of the uh, people th- putting it together. Is he like, yeah, the, uh, sorry, Eric, show? yeah, Eric Noble, he's the producer for the event. So yeah, it's um it's gonna be at Hawk Arrow Springs. It's owned by this guy. His name's Bill uh Bill or or Hawk Arrow. Um, he's a council member in the Cherokee Nation uh, organization. It's one of the organizations that is involved. Uh, like they own the land and they're involved uh, <clears throat> with the with the festivals and they've like sanctioned it and everything for kind of this eclipse. And uh, there's gonna be uh, the chief is gonna be there as well and is gonna do a blessing while while the eclipse is happening so it's gonna be like a super interesting event and it's just something uh it's kind of like right up my alley that I, like i've i really like i love music festivals and it's kind of like got me kind of into all this mess anyway and uh you and, and me you and me both <laughs> yeah yeah and uh so it's just it's another it's an opportunity to go in a certain direction with my podcasting career as well like um, you know, I, I'm super interested in music festivals and I'd, I'd love to be able to do this more in the future where I do get to, you know, interview people that are going to be there and just kind of be involved with some more of the media surrounding an actual festival. It's not really, it doesn't really get out there so much. It's start, starting to become more of a trend. So it'd be something really cool to get more involved in. So I'm learning a lot about it in the process and, uh, and getting to meet some cool people on the way. So it's been a really cool adventure and like also you know learning stuff about a lot about audio and <laughs> when things can go wrong and stuff like that which you mentioned you've had a lot of your fair share of so i've had some technology stuff going in my front as well oh yeah there but, was uh, one, that one episode we had back in the day where yeah, I mean, yeah. the audio was so jacked up that um it was just barely even audible because for some reason there was this echo that was getting played over the top of when you would speak and uh, it, I still released it, even though it was really terrible sounding, because uh, you could basically understand what you were saying. And I feel like you were dropping like mad truth about how to get out of the matrix. So um, I want to come back to that also, because uh, <laughs> I want to see how like the idea of the matrix <laughs> might have evolved since we last spoke to each other. Sure. But um, back to darkening of the sun, I'm I guess my first question would be, what would you say the main intention behind the festival is, if you could sum that up? Sure. So the the main intention is to obviously honor the the celestial event, the eclipse, um, and it's to be done in the in the Native American tradition, um, and it's a with a, I it's a Cherokee tradition, but it, it's, I think it's also widely shared amongst different tribes, but basically the, there's this concept of this, this frog that's swallowing the sun for a certain period of time and everybody kind of makes a lot of noise or, 
uh, th does a lot of praying and like kind of goes crazy around this time to get the frog to spit the sun back up basically. So it's this whole um, essence of kind of like holding on to like, to like what's dear for this like really powerful transitionary period. Like you're going through some really heavy darkness. That's just like really kind of strange and almost kind of unexpected in a way, but is also just symbolic uh, for what yeah. our times are right now, actually. Yeah, exactly. Also that too, which is, which is really interesting. And so it's also trying to, I think the event is trying to capture all of that as well. This kind of, um, shift we're having in the collective consciousness I think at this time just like a lot of a lot of festivals are doing this right now too which is really interesting it's this real wave that we're going through right yeah, now I have, a, like I have a ton of friends that went to Oregon for Oregon Eclipse um, actually and in the internet itself is kind of having uh, a similar experience to the, <laughs> to what you described as the Native American spiritual symbolism about the eclipse um, I don't know how like how far you go into internet happenings and culture, but um, are you familiar at all with the uh, the meme right now of Keck? Do you understand this? I've I've seen it, but I don't know exactly what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it, and I'm sure it's one of those things that's like you're, I'm. It's just my interpretation of it from the outside, but okay. So. Um, there's this meme uh, that got created out of some cartoon frog that was originally called Pepe the Frog. And okay, the, yeah, the, I know Pepe. <laughs> the meme was that um, Kek, which is actually an Egyptian lord of chaos and uh, basically like the lord of, or the god of like boundary crossing and um, opposites, like things expressing their opposite nature. Basically mm -hmm. just like, it's a chaos um, <clears throat> symbolized as the frog, I think, because the frog is like amphibious and both a water creature and a land creature and it blurs those lines. But anyway, um, there's this entire meme war happening right now where all these people are creating all these Keck memes. And um, at the core of it are a group of people that literally do think that they have uh, connected with the actual Egyptian lore God Keck and are um, <laughs> attempting to attempting to use his uh, influence and power and the the uh, absurdity of how memes can just go super viral, I guess, or something. And uh, to, I don't know what it is that they're attempting to do. And there's some aspect of it related to like Donald Trump being a time traveler and that's <laughs> and too much time travel and too much fucking with the timeline by CERN. Um, what, this is according to the internet has caused this uh, this ancient Egyptian god to reawaken because it was dormant um, anyway uh, it's it's all really completely crazy the further you look into it but I just find it interesting that that's going on because it's like um, there's this chaos that it, the in the Egyptian pantheon is symbolized by this frog god that is sort of uh, enveloping consciousness right now as we all slide towards whatever this gigantic next phase shift really is and you know some of us are on a higher level of awareness during this than others but everybody is experiencing these constant sh uh, upgrades or devolutions depending on i guess like the direction that you're uh, you're facing uh, i'll let you go <laughs> <laughs> what do you so think uh, it's funny. It's, uh, I think I think everybody's gonna experience it in the in their own exact way. You know what I mean? I think it's we're we're all of some uh, pretty much a similar basic composition, really. You know, and I think it's 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 gonna have a uh, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to it's hard to put an expectation on it too. Exactly what it's gonna be. That's kind of the weird thing. But it seems like you know, with things that are like more of a, of a cyclical nature, like it's, it seems like it would be something that would lead towards growth. Uh, even if that means certain parts of you breaking away or dying away, it's like whatever is pushing you towards moving forward, like continuing to move through whatever the next cycle is. It's, it's like you're becoming more streamlined, you know? And um, also expanding in a way, because as we are going 
forward into a higher level of knowledge, which is something that comes from a higher level of awareness. And that's theoretically what any kind of um, celestial event of this magnitude could be signifying. And so that makes it a subjective experience if it's a consciousness shift. And it's also like within theogens or psychedelics, it's like you have to put your own intention into the energy of the moment that's coming uh, and prepare your set and setting for yourself and uh, allow allow that energy that's surrounding uh, all of this, that this transition energy, I guess you could call it, to just shape your own personal um, transition and catalyze that, I guess. So that's what the, uh, that's what the eclipse is about. If you ask me, it's not about any specific, um, some crazy like end times prophecy. That's what everyone always wants to go Mm -hmm. to first. Right. 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 (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I think that's, that's what a lot, a lot of people do turn to history and to end even to prophecy. And like, there's, certain aspects of it that are, I, I do find to be true and other aspects that are, like a lot of it is repetitious through history, if you notice too. And a lot of it just calls for things of our higher nature to progress toward our higher good generally, you know, and, and which is what evolution is basically. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And it's even if that's manifesting through internet memes, it's, it's <laughs> well, everything has that as above, so below connection. So it's like, right. what is the as above, so below to an internet meme war? <laughs> there's only like, there's only one thing that's changing. There's only, it's all one thing, right? So, uh, so the entire um, program that is unfolding, that code is written into every other thing because of the base substance, um, all energy or all matter and energy are the same, um, I guess, vibrations in the medium that we experience as mind. It's all the same stuff. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah. It's all coming, emanating from these things called stars. And so it's really crazy to uh, be witness to a moment where this thing that is essentially the source of all life in the entire dimension that we're a part of (laughs) anyway is going to be uh, covered up by this thing that's normally reflecting it and shining it back to us it's almost like this uh, crazy reversal of the moon's purpose or what the moon maybe not the moon's purpose but the moon's normal role I guess role and purpose might be the same in nature but um, you know it gives us this opportunity because whenever you are uh, in a dark room I don't know if you've ever tried a sensory deprivation isolation tank yep uh that's actually when it becomes easier to see the light within and i think if there's one thing that is being heralded by um any type of prophecies that are trying to explain uh a momentous and positive shift in consciousness or shift on you know the reality that you might call like i guess the uh the singularity or the next level or whatever it could very well be a um, you know, cause we, we're in a current state, like everything is in these states and usually they're, they're like binary states. And the current state is there's an earth here and a sun there and they're separated, but the sun is still the source of the earth essentially. Um, so if that's a state, then wouldn't there also be a state where there is no separation between the energy of source and the, uh, thing that it's energizing. And so if you are, getting the opportunity to close your eyes in real blackness where the sun itself is being completely blocked. Um, Maybe that will let us finally find where within the infinite blackness of when we close our eyes, that actual spark of light that is our personal sun exists at. And if we could ignite that or move closer to that or expand that through awareness of it, because energy flows where attention is directed then maybe we will actually change the state of our current our current position which is that we're no longer separate from source at all you could have stole the words right out of my head man that's like <laughs> it's, it's like, like i'm glad we're getting right in this direction just cause, yeah because that's that's ultimately like we need to see the actually see the light that's inside of us and see that that that's right there is no separation between that so it's kind of like maybe it'll be like a here we are. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, 
and that, that's I think that's going to be interesting for a lot of people to experience that for the first time um, and many for you know in a, in a different state than they maybe other <clears throat> ever have before but I think that when, when people can like really recognize that we're all really you know the creator we're just different divisions of it it's not like saying like oh anyone's necessarily better than the other or anything it's just that's we're the, the same spirit and we're just that judgment is what yeah. creates the separation exactly exactly it, it takes you it like that in the separation takes you out of the perception of the connection and then we're separate and then you know there's the division the but it's also necessary to like understand a lot of parts of reality. You know, like there's like discernment, judgment, like this is a, this is a box, this is a tree, you know, but even then like that can get us to see things as separate thinking of them and, and just words like that. So I think in some senses, what that has done for us is, here we're talking about the matrix stuff. <laughs> it's, that is the it's, matrix is the yeah, language yeah, really. A lot of it is, is the language to, to it's not that the things that you're seeing are necessarily wrong but it's like the certain way of associating with it there's only so much thought that's paid attention to it a lot of times because oh, anything of here's what you could say anything words. that's a symbol base anything that's a symbol based construct which would be anything linguistically based at all which is basically anything and everything we're doing in what we call civilization you could call that the fake matrix because the real matrix being nature and anything emerging from nature, emerging from the phi spiral, that's coming from a womb. And anything that's coming from a symbol-based uh, structure, linguistic structure, basically, anything that is uh, you know, a complex web of symbols, that is a language in its own way, whatever medium that happens to be. Uh, that, that's all artificial because it's not coming from a womb directly. But the question is, um, has that fake matrix gain sentience and is it fighting for our attention and therefore our energy and um can we even live without it right now <laughs> here here's part of an interesting twist that i i think i've started i've stumbled upon on that is i feel like you know in a sense like the fact that we're dealing with it it's coming from us also like it's it's in a, in a descendant order, but it's also all this stuff has been here forever in a sense as well. Like when you think about nonlinear time and how this is all of a, a continuum, it makes you kind of wonder where, where in this structure does it fit in? And it's, 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 it, it is kind of hard to ex explain, but like with, with language itself, you know, in different experiences I've had, like, it, there is there is a substructure to literally how things are connected that you could that <laughs> you could see as language um, in certain travels in certain states in certain meditations there's uh, um, you can see the code in yeah, the reality around you. Yeah, but, think that's, about but that's like the, that's like the real matrix. So, like, I get I get what you're saying. Like, there's there's or it, control, is it though? There's this. That's also the thing. There's like this paradox. Like, what the you know? Because it's a part of it. It's literally all a part of it. You know what I mean? Because well, like, yeah, but whenever you're looking, whenever you're even seeing anything that's basically what you call symbols or language, or you're hearing them, or you're speaking them, at all times, it's always something that's in the past that's being described it's never like anything that's actually in the present moment only can really come through as a feeling and then as soon as it does get a language tag on it that means it, it happened or it might be in a process of happening but the thing the part of it that you're talking about already happened you know so like uh even that reception of symbolic information that can happen when you're in a high, heightened state of consciousness or, or a altered state of consciousness or just what happens to some people spontaneously. I know people do have spontaneous experiences of seeing sacred geometry or you even just look at a pattern that's existing in nature and that can give you, people have all kinds of reasons that cause them to have their out of body moment where they pop out and actually see that there is a real matrix to tap into. And um, that's kind of like the plant consciousness maybe and the animal consciousness is the, what we're calling the fake matrix, but I get what you're saying is it is all real and it's not really fake. And even if I'm calling it artificial, cause it's not birthed from a womb, that which created it was 
<laughs> so, or this whole thing itself. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Or this entire reality is the womb for that type of consciousness right. to emerge. It hasn't even been born yet. It's like that's that's part of the paradox. I I would agree with, and also to say that yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we should talk about darkening of the sun a little more. I mean, we were we got here off of talking about what the hell is an eclipse symbolizing, and you know, I don't think we've got it figured out. But no, <laughs> I think we like really got some damn good speculation in, and um. I'm curious, like, what's what is the event going to be doing for the actual uh, eclipse itself? I know it's like a couple hours long, and then maybe two minutes and forty seconds of full eclipse time, right? Yeah. So the the path of totality, like the the totality of the eclipse, is going to be two minutes forty seconds uh, round. It starts at I believe one fifteen or so. Uh, I'd have to look online real quick. Um, uh, you can find that online. It, it says it on the Facebook page exactly what time it is, but, but, uh, but yeah, um, everyone's going to be begging the frog to spit out the um, <laughs> sun. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm going to be there oh, yeah. uh, by the way, everybody, mm -hmm. I didn't even mention that, but you know, me and Chris are both going to be at this event we're talking about. We want to see you there. So I hope you, mm -hmm. um, if you don't have something in mind for your weekend or for this once in a lifetime eclipse event then uh and you're near missouri or in missouri that this is a place where you can actually see the full eclipse in its entirety um i don't even know if we actually mentioned that straight up but yeah that's a true story yep and uh pretty much while it's going on that there's the there's they have two big hills on the property that you can see really clearly around uh, they have the medicine for the people tribe hang out camp out area there that's um or yeah it's like they're gonna have like uh workshop domes and different stuff like that on the hill up around there uh but in a big medicine wheel and then there's gonna be another uh there's two sacred fires basically there's the one at the medicine tribe camp out and then um up on the hill there's a bigger fire that'll be where the traditional ceremony will be at and it'll just be saging people off and uh yeah, and he'll, you know, give a speech and the chief will give a speech and yeah, it should be really interesting. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if I've really talked about Sage in the podcast before. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but that's something that's been coming up hard for me lately is um, energy hygiene mm -hmm. is, it's so easy to forget that there's a direct connection between your energetic practices, how you clear energy within yourself and uh, re refresh and reset yourself physically and on like a, a subtle energy level to the connect the connection to the way that you experience um your day and for me like it comes directly through my, the way i interact with other people um how much friction there is or isn't completely can be uh i can completely connect that back to if i've like smudged myself <laughs> recently it's like a daily thing to keep to keep at uh keep reminding myself to do that it, for some reason I want to forget that it does actually make a huge difference and it's like it's something you can't write down in a science book and say this is what happens when you use sage because it's different for everybody but I, I encourage everyone to take up the use of that particular metaphysical tool because burning it um what, what do you think Chris what would you how would you explain the uh how sage actually does work and you know explain the origins of it because I think you at least have an idea Sure, sure. So, um, I would I would agree with you with a lot of what you said about it as well. Um, and like even for me, like I, I use Palo Santo um, before I do a lot of shows, and especially I did I did one before this one. Hey, I use Palo before the show too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I really um, I've used Sage in a lot of different areas in my life, from clearing spaces to. Um, just you know helping to clear myself and cleanse my own energy and groups and you know by myself and whatever um and it, i would definitely agree it definitely you know exercising some ener <clears throat> energetic hygiene with it, it it definitely can change the outcome of certain situations at least in the way that you feel when you're in that 
It's, I think it's just, it has a lot how to do feel. with the and then way that you can feel. direct the way yeah. things go because you're going to act how you feel. It's true. It is how you feel. That's a really good point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It can make, it can make me go from feeling like, okay, you might get into a, uh, a misunderstanding with somebody, but then you have to keep being around them. Um, but for some reason you can't get out of the vibe that you had whenever the misunderstanding was happening, even though you want to feel past it and just having something that is a tool that symbolizes that uh, transition energetically mm-hmm. is so helpful. It really does make a huge difference. I'm sure you can people, I'm sure you can go find it at like your local head shop, um, smoke shop or hippie shop, something like that. Mm-hmm. Just try it out. Yeah, yeah. This, this is not brought to you by Sage. <laughs> there is no company called Sage. You can just go plant it in your backyard. Yeah, you can do that too. Definitely, I and mean, probably be chemical free that way too. It's not all not all Sage is the same. Oh man, <laughs> I never thought about that. After th- <laughs> you have to think about everything. They put poison on everything these days. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's the Matrix. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna have to get you back on the show for a full-fledged episode yeah, yeah. soon. Um, I'm actually ready to see about wrapping up this little preview. I would like to touch on any other aspects of Darkening of the Sun that you think should yeah. be mentioned, like um, any workshops you might know about, or just uh, like encouragement for people to come out. Yeah. So, you know, first off, there's, there's going to be really awesome music that's going to be there. There's going to be uh, solo sets from different members of uh, Knock on Medicine for the People. Um, uh, Aaron Cam will be playing there. Blue Fruit Snacks, uh, Twiddle. I'm going to look on the page real quick. There. Music. Yeah, this will all be linked on the, uh, yeah. ep- the post for this episode page as well. Oh, links to, you know, where you can see the lineup for this. And yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, Twiddle, Dustin Tom. Um, if you don't know any of these acts, just expect, like, some real consciousness, love, and harmony-based um, jam and music, you know? like Yeah. Uh, we got we got Dixon's Violin, Madison's Pruitt, Jake Slake. Dixon is a wonderful dude. You should yeah. – uh, people should go check out Chris's interview with Dixon from Dixon's Violin. He is a, sh- a sound shaman. He's worth yeah. going to a festival to see. Yeah, he's super awesome. So there's there's going to be so much awesome stuff going on. Also, there's going to be the Sacred Circus there. Uh, my friends Adam and Katie are, are putting that on. Uh, super awesome. Um, they do like trapeze and um, was like the silks and just all kinds of acrobatics. It's, you know, fire spinning, cool stuff. Um, you can inspect, expect to be inspired yeah. by your time oh, yeah. at this festival oh, yeah. to come out. There's going to be a lot of cool workshops, um, a lot of yoga, community bonfire as well. Um, I'm just kind of like reading off a few different things on here. I know some of my friends have some awesome workshops there. Just definitely check out the, the website, uh, darkeningthesun.com, um, and their Facebook page as well, Darkening the Sun Festival. And there's just there's awesome stuff that's going on. So it's worth digging through the site and seeing what's happening. You definitely yep. want to make sure that you come out to it. It's going to be a really powerful uh, moving event. I feel like it'll be great energy there um, and uh, a really powerful tribal feeling. I think I feel like it, we're all really going to come together. There's not like tons of people there, but there's going to be a lot of people there. Um, and and these are your people. You're yeah, exactly. right now. These are your exactly. people. You need to come exactly. be with us. Yeah. Yeah. Come find me somewhere at the festival. Um, I'm gonna be walking around with a handheld microphone, trying to harvest cool conversations with random cats and enjoy myself at this event. So uh, I'll see you there, Chris. Thanks awesome, for man. doing this quick promo with me for Darkening of the Sun. Cool. Thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it, especially at the hour. <laughs> oh, I boys got energy for you, baby. <laughs> You're just like really easy to talk to. Uh, we always like slip right into some of the deepest, gnarliest yeah. shit, which we we um, we went deep real fast, dove right in. <laughs> and so I'm happy with that. I didn't have to warm up or anything. And yeah. we'll get you back on here really soon because I think clearly we could explore the depths of the mystery of consciousness quite a bit further. I think so. 
Maybe okay. Do that soon. So super stoked to see you there and then uh, see anybody else who comes out. It's well worthwhile coming out. Um, it's kind of a once in a lifetime event. So definitely. Totally definitely once in a lifetime. <laughs> All right. All right. See you guys there. Much yeah, love, y'all. All right. Peace, James.